crazy. So, and then now we have this, and we want to add the remove button. Okay. So, okay, if I, I will just try to divide my UI into kind of small components. And here I have the to-do list. So probably the more natural thing is to put the button here because we will have like a button next to it. It's to put the button here. So I will go to to-do list and I have this thing. Now I will refactor it to uh, to-do item. Okay. So I will create a new file, JavaScript file inside the to-do directory, to-do item I will just, we don't really need state or anything so we'll just like use functional component so we'll say import react from react form from or let's say function or export default function so we are just exporting by default this function uh, let's say to do item the props we need the uh, let's say return I will just take this code from here which is the whole row I will put it here I need some props I will figure out what to pass uh, here I will import my to do item from to do item okay here I will say to do item before let's just do this let's figure out which parent we need so we have key we need the key so I will say props I will destructure the props from the props object, so I say const say props make sense? Yeah. I would say key well, the to do just the to do, it's an object and oh, contains okay. done stuff, so I didn't need to pass two separate things to do, I have the on change or let's say the the update to do item Okay, what I need? Uh, so I need the key, the to do, and the function to update to do. That's it. And here I just need to do like this. So here I will declare my prop types. You remember prop types? Yeah. You remember the prop types? Yeah. To the to white light like some props and stuff. Okay. What is yeah, exactly. So I will do to do item dot prop types, and here I will import the prop types library, so it can have all the functions that check prop types from prop types. Okay. So here I will do this to do. So here I have the key, which is, which, what's the, and you, so, prototype, so, number, it's number, we have, uh, it's required, precisely, required. We have the uh, to do its prop type dot object. Just a second. I want to declare the clear schema about the object, not just because if I will say an object, you can pass any object, but it's an object with done and text specifically. So I need. So the better you specify, the better error message you get, and the faster you will debug your code. That's it. So prop types, object 
Shay. Oh, hi. No worries. I was late also, so. <laughs> it's not just you. Have a seat. <laughs> So uh, if you can see here, there's a little lot of functions that you can use. There's array, boolean functions, objects, string, symbol. Symbol is the new type. There is node. <coughs> if you want to pass like React node, there is element, React element, instance of. If you want to specify, I want an object that is an instance of this class. Okay. So, so you can actually take this one and say two node. So you can say one of if you want to have just two values. You can say one of type, if you specify like, you, I can take a number or string, or you can say array of numbers, object of numbers, so an object with property values of certain type, shape, so this is the, an object taking on a particular shape, so this is like an object with certain shape, is required, so it's, it's not required, it is required. Yeah, this is crazy how you can forget. Okay. Uh, you can even write your custom props. It's really small function. Okay. So it's really like handy. You can use it. It's really good. Uh, so we need the shape. So it's prototype dot prototype dot shape. And we call it with we don't need this and here you can say it's prop type string so we have done and we have text done is prop type dot dot put and text is prop type dot string can you can you put back Ah, okay. Is it, <coughs> is it clear? Yeah. <coughs> Where do you take your time, take your time. Where do you put is required? You can put is required. And definitely it's required. No, not the outside outside. Outside is also required. Okay, it's also. But I don't think we can do that. Mm, prop types required shape. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense to put it outside. Because we are, you are already specifying that inside you have two, you need these two properties. Yeah, but you're not specifying that you need the two. Yeah, but technically, if you need the properties inside, you should pass the object outside. Kind of. I know that maybe you need the pro if it exists, you need yeah, these two properties. Yeah, but but, it's but if it doesn't exist, no worries. You can do that. You can. The, the no, so we can work without having. Exactly, that's that's the thing. But mainly, like, kind, of, it's kind of to inherit the uh, the functionality or something from here. So if you say it's required here, this will be kind of required. But yeah, doesn't matter. Because I'm seeing it like if you say if there's a to do list and you have it should be like this. It should be yeah. This is required. Yeah, but if you don't pass it, no worries. Or otherwise, if you you need to pass it also. So the the exactly, out exactly, exactly. the outside required is needed if you want to really specify. So sometimes, for example, you have to do, but you can work without to do. Mm -hmm. So you can specify if you pass me to do, it need to be an object with these two properties. Otherwise, if you don't pass it, no worries, mm -hmm. we still friend, kind of. So yeah, I would be <laughs> angry, but we can still be friends. <laughs> you need to pass me to do. <laughs> so is this clear? Is this clear? Yeah, so I'm just writing is required number here. And this is shape. Shape means we have an object to do object and it contains two properties. Mm -hmm. So I need an object with this shape. Yeah. It needs two properties. Done is uh, boolean, text is string, and it's required. Yeah. 
Clear. Yes, the function. So we have the update to do item. Update to do item. And it's prototype dot func. And it's is required for sure. Here I will use the to do and it gives me all the required by default. So you can see coding faster, dev gain, you can see all the properties and it's it's just cool. Especially if you if you are if you are working on projects and something, you don't know. For example, I work in a company, we have a lot of components. We, I don't know, like like Nils, my friend, he wrote this code. But I didn't see this code. So I want to use it. I want to use it to do item. But the end I didn't write it. So if there is like uh, prototypes, I can just use it without going and reading through the code and how it's working. And that's really handy. It's a contract. Yeah, exactly. Specifically, it's like a contract between you and the developer. Because sometimes you are the user. The user is the user of the web app. Sometimes you as developer, you are the user. You are the user of someone else's code. Yeah. That's it. You are user. We are user of React. We are using React. Yeah. We are developers, but we are using React. Mm -hmm. We are using macOS. So it's really good to have contract. Mm -hmm. It's really clear and stuff. Yeah. Contract is the better word. So here I will pass the key. Okay. I will pass the to do. And I will say, just a second. So yeah, this props dot update to do item. This the props to to do item. Just item, just one. Okay, let's see. Still works or not? Test. Let's see. Yeah, to do is not a prop. Trying to access it with a result of undefined. Yeah, uh, there is something. Okay. Yeah. I have the same problem when I fixed the homework from last time. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to tell you something. The key. You remember I told you the key is not really a prop. It's really a special property for React to kind of know which list or which item is updated. You know, it's not really for you to work with. So if I'm passing it here, I cannot access it inside the to-do item. Even though I'm using it like props, but it's just special. It's for React. Okay? So I pass the key, but I don't need to pass it to the ally here. Because React will do its job mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes, here. So because I'm rendering a list of to do items and not a list of allies. I'm rendering a list of to do items. Mm -hmm. so to do items is the item now and not the ally. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're taking the first Yeah. Yeah. React will figure out how to do that because React will work this. Work with, it will work with this as an item and not the other. No. Let's say hello. Just again. One to do item key is not pro. Trying to access it. Yeah, because. I'm still accessed, yeah, I'm still accessing, accessing it yeah, here. Yes. So, uh, actually, we are using the key for two things. We are using the key. Not really, f so the key here is for React, but also we are using the key to distinguish between items. Okay? So, I will just put something here. I will just put Let's keep key here. But I'm gonna rename it to to do ID. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I would I don't I don't need it here because I'm already using the key there. Mm -hmm. 
So I have two functionalities of the key. For React, to distinguish between items, so we can update faster. And for me, to distinguish between items, so I can update them. Okay? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do like to do ID. To do ID, to do ID is the key. So I'm passing the key two times. The first time for React, I don't know about it, and the second one is for me because I cannot access this. It's for React. Clear? But this one is for me. Okay. So I have to do ID here. I have to do ID here. Let's just indent the code. So here I will have to do ID. Okay. Mm, seems correct. Seems correct. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know yet. Test. Still. To do ID of it's not string. It's not string. It's not string. It's So let's go to the to do form because I'm storing to do list manager because this is my container to do ID here yeah because it's string remember so using ID one ID two ID three ID four so it's not a number you remember here I'm using number to track which like number I'm on it now but I mean I'm signing the ID as an ID one ID two remember that? Yeah. Because if you go to React here, up to do manager, to do items, ID zero, ID one, remember that? So it's technically it's string. You see like it's a little bit like slower to use prop types because this is not our, this is not like errors. We can code and our code can easily without that, but it's really bad if you work in the teams and also if you have, for example, this project for you or for a client and you need to maintain it. For example, I don't know, like you finish the website after two months or three months, and not the client will call you. Ah, I have something. I need to add new features, or I, or if you work in the company, you will keep like moving and adding new features. So you will update the code. Two months after, you will for, you will write a lot of components. You will really like forget about this component. So it's really handy to have this stuff around. Let's try again. Yes, now we don't have any warnings. Let's see if it's working or not. Yes, it's working. Okay. Let's add the button now. Mm, yes, so here in the to do item, I guess. It's better to do this. No one told me about that, sorry. I really forget. Yeah. Is it fine like this? Is it fine? Okay. So we will have like a button here. Yeah, let's say remove. Okay. We have on click. So it's for removing. So let's say remove to do item. Okay. And here I cannot just pass it like that because. I will receive this com this uh, function from the parent component, and the parent component doesn't know which like uh, to do item I'm in now. Actually, we can do that, but it just li just a little bit hacky. We can do like this. So time to refactor. Let's do like this. Okay. We can do like this. 
remove to do item this dot props so what the parent of this component which is the to do list manager is passing this function and also this component is passing it to right so it's kind of necessary so it's kind of tree <laughs> remove to do item okay Here what I can do is I can do this. Key. I can do this. And here you just need to call it like this. Or you can move this here. So you can just pass it like this, and here you can do that. So there is some implementation details. Either you you put the implementation details inside the to do list, uh, to do item, or to do list. I would say let's put it into the item, but you may find like another argument why so you should put it inside to do list instead of item. But yeah. Okay. So we have this. We can really omit this stuff. And this is not the key, this is the to do ID. I need to implement this function now in the to do manager. But if I will click remove, errors. Not just because of that, but I need. So, if we will remove this, because we cannot use, remember, we cannot use this and stuff inside the functional component. It's a function. So, yeah, uh, remove, remove to do is not a function because. I'm missing it here. Okay, so in the to-do list, I would say remove. I'm saying like this, and we'll add it here. Do you remember this this factory? So here I will say this function. Before doing anything, I will bind it. So I make sure that the this is referred to this class, even though I pass it to another component. Because now you see like I'm passing it to another component and that component will pass it to another component. So if I will miss with this, it will just disaster it, like a lot of like. So it's really important to bind it. So here I will show to do ID. And technically I can just well I cannot do that, but yeah, we can do this. We can do new to do list. It's needs cost new to do list. Okay. I will destructure the uh, the this dot state. To do items, or let's let's keep the naming better. So we use like the, the same name everywhere. So we have like this. Now what I can do is delete, delete new to do items dot to do id. Yes, from an object. Well, let's say name units page. So to, see, this is like with string, and this is just natural key. So I can say D or object equal delete 
object dot name true because the operation was successful now if I would say object it will just just delete it now I will say this dot set state I will update one two three properties just one property which is to do items to do items and replace it with the new to do items. Let's check if it's work test. Hello, it should be hello. Clear? Any questions? Any questions? It's really important to have like this flow passing props around and calling props from child component. But the logic is, is it inside the parent component? That's really important. It's not about to do's and removing, it doesn't matter, but the, the flow of passing props and. Uh, you start the clean? Yeah. You can add it in to do item, but also in to do list. What do you mean? Uh, to do ID. Oh, here? Yeah. Because you pass it in here. Yeah. We could, we could hide the implementation. So we could do, I will just comment this. No, I, I cannot do that. To comment inside GSX, you do like this. <coughs> yeah, so. So I just copy this, I will put it here, okay? I can just do this. So this function would just call, this button would just call this function. Doesn't know what's really happening inside. So if you are the developer of this component, you would never know what's inside the remove to do item and what to do item is doing. Maybe going to the server, doing fancy UI stuff, you don't know. Because you are just calling the function. You are just the consumer. We don't know how the function is kind of written or anything. So, but now it's the responsibility of this, not this, of this component to provide the implementation details of this function. Okay? Yeah. Because now, so now instead of using this, you can pass the implementation, which is this thing. So you do I would do the same here, I will just come on. Remove to do item. Okay. But here I need to have kind of an implementation detail. Which is this dot props dot remove and the key. Okay. The mm -hmm. test. So now we kind of extracted the code or the logic of deleting or how to call the delete function from the item to the list. The reason why you can't go more you don't have the key. Exactly. This, in this depth you have the key. Because you are iterating over the list. But you cannot know which item to delete if you are not inside the items. You need to be inside the items to know which item to delete. Okay? Is it clear? Let's try to do the edit. It's a little bit difficult, but let's try to do it together. Okay? So, before let's just go back to... So you can do it either this way or the other way, it's up to you. You know your code better than me, so... Okay? So no, let's see. Here. Okay. 
Ja, also gibt's nichts zu machen. No, 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 no. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Yes. Oh, I just didn't refresh. The test, test. Food. Okay. Here. Now let's add the, the edit. So, how we want to have the edit functionality? Let's. Uh, so we want to like when click on when clicking on it, it should change to okay. edit text book. That's that's. Yeah, so that's kind of uh, what we need. So let's write. So it kind of makes sense to put it inside the to do item. Yeah. Because it's just this line. Yeah. And we keep repeating it. So it doesn't make sense to put it inside the to do list. Mm -hmm. Because it's the list of the to dos. If I wanted to put it on the top, the bottom, between them, or just repeat it once, it kind yeah. of makes sense. But now I have. It's like the this remove or this checkbox. Mm -hmm. So I need to have the logic for each one. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. De definitely, definitely, you can, you, you can do that. But I guess it's kind of better, kind of UX to just put it there. If you click, yeah. if you click, for example, here, it will change to edit text, mm -hmm. and you can yeah. just type. Yeah, that would be the one way. But I would think that it also then fill the value up into the ad field and then change the ad to update. So test, test will go up there. Okay, but that's kind of I don't know. Uh, that's kind of error prone and yeah, and also kind of uh, for the for the user it will be like a little bit difficult. For example, let's say you click on this, you go there, you start editing. Maybe you click another button. Yeah. So either even for the developer, you need to make sure that every edge case it's kind of that's a little bit yeah, tricky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah, it would be a really good like exercise for you to do that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Let's try to do that. So now the first thing is to change the state when to click this. So the first thing here now is this is a functional component. But now we need to hold state. Each time you click on this, we need to flip. I'm in the edit mode. And when you click outside, you just go back to the read mode. So we need to between render like two different things. Mm -hmm. So we need state to hold like kind of um in the edit mode or not false or true. So I cannot use state in this functional component. So I need to kind of move it to or change it to uh, state or class component. So I can put state inside it. Does that make sense or? I understand, but I'm trying just to figure out how it's going to be. No, just just the concept of changing this to a class component because I cannot use state the state API here. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. So we will we'll just wait for this. I don't want to start. But you would also just pass a truck. Like <clears throat> if you just like edit, like you keep it stateless. Yeah. And then you could have a new state key. Called editing to do, and then in there you could just browse in. If, if it is false, yeah. you change. Yeah, definitely we can do that, but uh, it will be kind of put it inside the to do item. Yeah. Uh, no. Then. Um, yeah. Then inside to do item, the only thing you have to do is uh, create a new like branch saying uh, if the ID is this, then show the edit from part of it, or otherwise show the. Uh, yeah, def def definitely that, that will work. But I just like prefer to put it here inside the to do item. Yeah. So it should be all enco encapsulated inside the to do item. Yeah. All the logic of everything. Yeah, of updating. Of updating, of removing, like kind updating. of that. Because it's really responsible. But yeah, you can we, we can find like kind of infinite like way of Where doing to put it together, exactly yeah. to fit the that's the like that's why I like React. We can like like either his like approach is better than mine or mine is better than him, or you can find another one better than both of us. But the good thing is you can kind of make it work. By just reusing this component, 
If you are using another library, for example, I don't know, like jQuery or something like that, you cannot do that. Once you start, done. But here you can see we are debating, and we can do all the solutions. <coughs> we can do all that. That's the beauty of React. And also the danger. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's dangerous because developers would just like doing stuff uh, without considering anything, and that's bad. It's all like the same components that's what I mean. Like, it is like this black box, and you're yeah. using them in so many different Exactly. And you just, yeah, you just use props to kind of change them, definitely. And then if you have, uh, I, I don't use prop types, and I don't test which is very annoying. Yeah. So when yeah. I box them, I really have to kind of sit them. Yeah. <laughs> I think I have to go home and put in prop times. Okay. Yeah, today it's like your homework. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> homework for teachers. Same as me, I have a lot of components without <laughs> Props checking, so let's go down and do it. <laughs> Does it also take it away like when it compiles? Do you know that? You can do, you can strip that actually. There is like a bubble plugin where you can strip that. But we are we are not using prop types, we are using flow. Okay, yeah, okay. So we type check our JavaScript. Yeah, okay. Because like uh, Facebook is moving toward that. Yeah. So we're but yeah, definitely either solution will work. So now we have this. We want to add the edit function. Let's say when you click on this, you change it to edit true. So it's like, it's like when you click on this, you just show it edit uh, box. Click on what? Click on the text. Oh, okay. You show like an edit box. It's like an input text. Mm -hmm. And when you click outside, it will save that value. Okay? So. But to do that, we need to store like which state I'm on it now, either I'm on the edit or not on the edit state. So I need kind of a piece of state which is like edit true or false, and based on that, I will render my component. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. So mm, so I. We have been like debating about where to put the state and how to pass that. <laughs> so yeah, so now we have like a lot of options, like same as this function. You can put it outside, pass it, do it. So if you put it here, if you put the state here, you need to change this to a class. So you can use this to state because you need to stay to store like which state I'm on it now. Uh, yeah, let's try to do that. So you can see like the process of refactoring kind of. So let's say I will just this is kind of function. So generally I render I say render render I remove props I do class to do item yeah And I put this here. I indent the code. I use this dot props. This instead of just props. This is my way of refactoring, kind of. Let's see if it's still working. Yeah, uh, we didn't export it. So export. Default. Test. Well, it's kind of easy because the functional component becomes kind of the render because that's what function like functional component is. Okay, so here I will have the constructor. I will have props. I will have super props just to inform my part. Inform them about <laughs> your props, your inputs. <laughs> So this dot state, I will put edit false. That's my initial state. I'm not editing. And here I will do kind of conditional rendering. So I use this. So this dot state dot edit. If it's this. We take all this code. 
just a second after that we can do this In. Let's say just false here. Exactly outside of the inside JSX. Yes, that's that's definitely a better option. So we can no without without without. So I would say router as you said. If it's if it's what I need to remove this. And put this on the top, kind of. But there is just one thing. Can be simplified. So now it's kind of simplified. Nah. So I will put this dot state dot edit. So if it's edit. Yes, 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 yes. I will do it just to finish this. So if it's editing, I will render this. Otherwise, I will render this. And I need my thing. Remember to push and not save. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> your components, are, you're, you're like a computer with burn or something. <laughs> so. Push, push, push. Thank you. Okay. So now we are here. Let's say value. You remember this is kind of form, so when we use forms we put the state of the input inside our component state and we use on change to change the state. You remember? We don't rely on the DOM to read values. We give the DOM a value and we give it a callback, kind of change function. And every time the the input will change, it will inform on my React component that something changed. React will change the value of the state and pass the new state. So the input will not be responsible for its input. It will tell React that I'm changing or tell the component I'm changing using set state. Mm -hmm. And the component will use the re-render and pass a new value. You remember that, David? That's what we could see in the console with the, like we were typing something, it was changing numbers. Exactly. So I don't rely on the DOM. That's really dangerous to get kind of the truth. I rely on state. So let's say value it's to do dot text. And we need to add kind of a button. The button we don't need to add it in like it, we already have the button, we will add another. Yeah, but we will not use a button, we use the click. So every time you click on the text, switch mode. Let's say switch uh, actually yeah it's no, 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 not on the input, because the input, just a second, let's say, yeah, let's say you do this, add, I want to press on this, okay. and not this input, okay, so on click, switch, mode. Switch mode between like editing and you can come up with a better name. <laughs> okay? So let's say this dot switch mode. Function. 
switch. Ah, we are not outside. We can just use switch. Yeah, more. Okay. And you need to bind it here. This dot switch mode equal this dot switch mode dot bind. So we make sure we override this function to be kind of using the this of this class every time. No matter what, every time. And here we will say this dot set state. And we will flip. We are switching mode, so it doesn't matter if I'm on the edit or I'm not on the edit. If I'm on the edit, I make it the edit is false for the first time. I will make it true. It's true. I will make it false. Okay. So I just keep flipping. So I need to do this. Edit. Let's say edit mode. Let's say just edit false or true. But it's better if I use this dot props dot edit uh, this dot state. So edit equal not edit the so flipping mm -hmm. flipping between them. Okay, but there is a better approach to do that. There is a better approach to do that, which is until now we have been passing an object to the set, to do to to the set state. Okay, we have been passing an object in the set state. We can do better. We can do this dot set state, instead of passing an object, we can pass a function. And the function will take the state. So let's say state here. Okay, and what you return here, it will be merged with the state. It's like here. So if you return an object here, edit, it's state dot edit. You got the idea, never? What's happening? Yeah. We're just providing callback or function, and this function will take the state as a parameter, and it will return. The new, st not the new state, but new partial state. Because if you have like something else here, for example, the, the false, or let's say test, it, this will not remove this value, it will just merge it with it. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. When you do set state edit, it will not remove the old or the other properties, it will just merge them. Mm -hmm. Clear? Okay, test add failed prop types. You provided the value prop type for field without on change. You remember the on change, okay. but it's working. Okay, mm -hmm. now we need to handle something if you click outside. Mm -hmm. So we handled this using, I guess, on blur. Yes, I will just check. Yeah, so Umbler, let's say uh, finishing, finish, edit, or something. Finish, edit. Okay, same thing here. I don't need to bind every function, but I'm using it here with the input and it would be some state. For example, if I'm just calling the function, in a, let's say if I'm calling finish edit here, this dot finish edit. I don't really need to bind it because I'm just using it inside my class. But if I'm, if I'm passing it as props and stuff, that would be kind of the case where I need to. So what if you're using the window? I cannot use it technically a function inside the window. What do you mean? Like, for example, Let's say return input. Uh, yeah, let's say 
see hello I can put it here uh, not return yeah return input I know technically I know that this inside the render refer to this inside to the same this inside the component so there is no confusion here or anything I don't need to bind it I know that this here refers to the disk but I don't know what the disk will be referring to when this input we call this callback that's why we bind it so we are not seeking complexity it's just to simplify stuff this is why I bind every time I can just not bind, pass it, after that if there is errors, I bind it. But if you know that you cannot infer which context uh, or which what will be the disk inside your function, it's better to bind it. Because sometimes there is really weird like errors, you cannot figure out even that because of the disk, it's just weird names and weird errors. So let's say this dot set state, same thing. In the finish, we flip it. Let's try. <laughs> <laughs> Test, add, click. No, 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 no. Yes. So it's not really blur. Yeah, that's just that you didn't unchange, like you provide a value, you didn't then you always provide a no, I'm just uh, I'm just trying the for example I want one I kind of click outside. Yeah. Just like switch the component to the yeah. read mode. Yeah, I think you were talking about the error. Uh, not really, because so now when I click outside, yes it's working actually. But not always. So because it's blur. No, it's not about that. Well, yeah, the problem is like we need like something to track. I I don't remember if you remember the a DOM API. I have an input when I click on it. I should uh, or yeah, I have a, yes, 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 yes. Let's see. You remember ref? Yeah. Let's use her. <laughs> no, because I'm just trying to kind of maximize the like the utilities like of React API, so we can use them all. Now we'll use the ref. We'll see a ref. Edit input. This dot edit input equal edit. Input. You know, it, it's not really necessary to name them like to use the same naming here, but it's just better. Yeah. It, it's the edit input. Okay. So now let's see in, inside the switch mode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that will create like even more confusion. Mm. Yeah, just uh, it's not it's not about not working, but we want like when you click, you change that. Yeah. No, when you click like uh, outside of the. No, just like switch to the save it or switch to the edit mode. So, on blur is working, but it's working in case of. I will show you just a second. So you click, you add, you click on it. It will be kind of switched to the edit mode. Yeah. Now, when you click outside, it should go back to the. Yeah, but it it do that if you are if it's in fo like in the focus mode, and when you click outside, it will switch because we are using the on blur. Yeah. So, so uh, there is like a hacky way of doing it, which is when you click on it, you do like focus, you put the focus. That's what I'm trying to do. But where we can put the focus on when we, when we switch, so I will try. Yeah, so let's see. Update exactly. So, 
But the only thing, because I told them before that uh, set state is asynchronous, so you cannot just uh -huh. check the value of state. So what, what, what we can do is we use even the better API, which is passing a callback to the second callback to set state. So it will execute after the React done with executing the set state. Okay, so update focus. And it will do this, dot edit input, dot focus. Okay? And I'm referring to this here. But I don't need really to bind it because I will just do this. I'm not sure, but let's try. So let's say this. Or let's just pass a callback here. Okay? So I have two callbacks. Mm -hmm. Let's say this. If. Mm, react. Uh, so to state. Just a second. Just a second. Just a second. I just need to show you the proper API. Okay, it doesn't matter. Let's say we put state here. Let's say console dot load state. Okay, and we put the same thing here. So the switch mode, it's really the same thing as the. So I will copy this because it's the same function. Okay? Just a second. Let's try. After that, you can ask. Add. So we click. It's undefined. So I need to use this dot set state. So this dot state dot uh, edit. Okay? So, work. I can call this this dot update focus here, and this dot update focus here. Okay. I don't need to pass any state here. I don't need to pass any state here, and here. If this dot state dot edit, if you are if we are editing. Else, I will just provide for the first condition. If you are editing, you put the focus on. Let's try that. I don't know if it works. It's focus. It's work. I don't know if you got what I was doing. Yeah, but you will ask. You will ask. You, you want to ask? Is because I will put some stuff in the switch mode, which is in the finish edit. I will put here like I will update the state, so there's common like thing between them. But here I will save the value. I will say the dot set state with the new value. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So now it's working. You got what I did. What I did here. So I have the ref here. When you switch mode, after switching mode, because I told you, React will execute set state synchronously, asynchronously. So, so I can just call this function after here. But maybe in React it's still re-rendering when you pass this because JavaScript is asynchronous. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling React, okay, switch the state. When you finish switching the state, call this function, please. That's what the second function to the set to the set state do the second parameter of set state do even in 
Uh, what? It's a ref. So this, when this component will render for the first time, edit input will be this component, and I say this dot input equal edit input. So you change the input get, so input. Yeah, I assign it to variable, and I can use it everywhere because it's a class property. Precisely. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So you can work with the DOM directly. Okay, so now the only thing that we need when you edit this, you cannot edit it because of the on change. When you click outside, you should, should save the new value. Okay, let's go. Uh, mm. Yes. Any questions? Hmm? Yeah, focus is uh, when you have like, an, for example, when you have an input here, an input, when you click on it, you see like the blue. Yeah. The blue is this style, it's CSS. But there is functionality behind. Now you can type. You are focusing on this element. And what does blur do? Blur is the opposite of focusing. So this is focusing, you can type, this is blurring. You are not focusing on this component anymore. Maybe, for example, let's say, now you, are, you see the ad, it's highlighted in blue, now you are focusing on the ad. Now you are focusing on, you are not focusing on anything. Now you are focusing here. This is the focus and the blur. Focusing and blurring. Yeah, I, I was using actually tab to jump between the. See? You are focusing on elements. So it's like you are working with it now. Kind of that. We can find like a formal definition. Focus. Yeah, you can you can go uh, yeah. the idea from English. It's like focusing. That's it. You have to remove the focus from the element. So if you want to focus on an element, you use the focus method. Okay. So now we need the uh, edit text. We don't initialize it with this thing, but we initialize it with the props. So we say this dot props dot uh, to do dot text. You initialize the when you click on this should be initialized with the with the text that you had before. Which is we are passing it as props, and we need to get it from this dot props to do the text. It's from the props. Oh, yeah. It's the props. Okay, so you have the edit text here, and uh, so you have the edit text. Mm, yes. So we need to create a callback function. The on change function every time you type something to change this value using set state. You remember that? So we say function. Ah, not <laughs> sorry. Functional JavaScript. Say so change. Did it what? You want to ask him? Just ask this, please, 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 please. Don't be shy. Ask. No, it's simple. It's not simple. But you can see. Okay. <laughs> okay, you want to? Oh, no, 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 you cannot see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> 
So now we have like event. We say dos dot this dot uh, dot set state. <laughs> and we do edit text. Edit. Yeah, set state. The target dot value. And we need to pass this here. Instead of initialize it with random dummy value, we initialize it with this dot state edit text. And we updating use it change edit text. Yes, we need to bind it because we are passing it to the input and this will be referring to the input inside our function when you call it or when the input function will call it. Okay? Bind. Well, if you are tired of binding, there is some JavaScript libraries that do that for you or there is some new syntax, new JavaScript syntax that do that for you. Feel free to check it out. I will not do that for you. It's your job. What? You can uh, this is why I'm, I showed them the error before, but I'm really referring to the uh, to the new uh Yeah. Yeah, yeah, precisely. Yeah, we, we can do that. I, I guess I've showed you the row function approach before. We discussed that before. So yes. Say so yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It would be a lot. And if you have complex component components, it's Yeah, exactly. But you should not do that. You should not have complex components. <laughs> That's React way. That's React way. This component is already complex. So uh, if we can do better, we can just remove this. And put it inside another component and pass just the props to this component. Okay? Because this component is responsible for editing, for showing, for. That's a lot. Okay? Uh, yeah, until now. So we have changed edit text. Let's try. Test. Yeah, it's test. One, two, three. It didn't update, but if we check the React, it detects its text one, two, three. So now, when you finish updating, when you when the when this input lose the focus, we change our to do text with this value from the edit text. Okay, when we do that, we do it in the finish. Okay, so we say, but I cannot, my component is res is not responsible for storing the to-dos. So I need to get a function from my parent and I say, here is a new value. Mm -hmm. It's like the same thing with the, uh, with the checkbox. The parent give me a function and I will change it. Okay. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, exactly. So, yes, so the parent, which is to-do list manager, should give me a function. But we already have a function to update the checkbox. And updating the checkbox, switching it from false to true, it's almost the same thing as switching the text. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can maybe reuse a function. Or if it's not reusable now, we can refactor it, so it can be kind of reusable. So where is the update to-do text? Not this thing. We have a function here. No, update to the text is just for update to the item. Yeah. So I give it the item ID. So now what I'm gonna do is let's just think about this and try to So here I I'm kind of putting explicitly the value that I want to change. What about doing this? Because here,
I'm passing the to-do ID. Why not passing the new state, the new value? Mm -hmm. So we do like this. We do uh, to-do and done. It's not to-do dot done. Mm -hmm. So I moved the code from here to here as a second parameter. So I will receive a new object here in the update to do item. And this object will be here, new to do or new item. Old item, yeah. So I don't need to do this because I already did that inside my component. Okay, I can just set the new item straight away. Confused, I can see your faces. Confused, yeah. I'm happy because you are confused. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing my job. <laughs> I'm doing my job. <laughs> I don't need to get even the old item. So before, I was not having this thing, so I need to, I was just like changing it explicitly here. So I get the old item, I change it, and I put it in now. Why not changing the item inside my component? Why not changing the item here? And just give the, this function the new object. Why not? I can do this. New item. Const new item. Okay. And here. I don't need to do all this stuff to get the item and change the done and all these things. I already have the item here as second parameter. Okay. Let's try if it's working or not. Of course, I didn't finish the edit yet, but let's check because we kind of changed the code of the checkbox. No? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's working. <laughs> That's not good. We don't have any tests, so... Yeah, we will see, exactly. Yay. It's working! <laughs> nice. So now, we kind of changed the new API of this function to be kind of more usable, and we can do a lot of stuff. So now, we have, like, to do item. Here, inside finish, we call this same function, which is this dot update. Here I can just call it without this this dot props, but here I need to because finish I uh, finish finish finish. Remember this is like finishing this dot props dot update item. I need to pass. Now there is a problem. I don't have, or I have yeah I have it actually. I have, I have. So I have this dot props dot to do ID. Because remember, this props to do, this props to do ID, it's this component. Okay? And the new value is new item. Let's create new item. New item equal. My this dot props dot to do. Before I was changing the done. Now I will need to change the text instead of the done. While preserving the old values and just replacing this text value. So text it will be. Yeah, but there is just one thing. Uh, yeah, no. Worries. So what's this what what will be the new value of the text? What will be the new value of the text? Mm 
what it will be the new value of the text. Please focus with me. Don't blur, focus with me. This dot state dot edit text because I'm sorry to change of it here. Okay? Let's try. Test add food add food food. Lose focus. It's working. <laughs> you seem like really like uh, <laughs> that's too much. <laughs> Exercise. We need to do this. Yeah. No. Yes. Oh. But the only thing is, do all of you have the, uh, like this project, the, you have this project or not? I don't check anything. Okay, so maybe it would be too much to, mm -hmm. to do. Can <laughs> 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 But yeah, so What what do you mean? So instead of having the entire school example, maybe you just play with updating the state. Like taking the value from the field updating the state. But they all did that okay. for three weeks. <laughs> you have been doing that for three weeks, I guess. Yeah. Like set state and changing the input of value because this is like kind of the fourth. Yeah. This is the fourth, so I guess you are kind of comfortable with that. I completely understand. I'm not saying like you yeah. specifically, but yeah, but like in the, yeah. yeah, in general sense. So you did a lot, of, but what I'm trying to kind of focus on is the complex workflow of passing props and calling props when this dot edit. That's what I'm trying to kind of. So I, I, I need kind of an example like that. I don't know if we can have like a simple one. At the same time, it's kind of more complex. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, but that was what I was thinking is that maybe we should crunch something for like if people don't have the project, that we just create something very simple where they, like a task, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just like an exercise now, but uh, it's for like kind of 20 or 15 minutes. I don't know if we will have or they will have enough time to do that. I don't know. What's your I thought? Is it enough or? I'm not sure. Twenty minutes, you say? Twenty fifty ish. For we need to finish like even the kind of. So we have like a. We have we have twenty minutes for solving and also for the exercise. Okay. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, some people have the to-do thing and some people don't. Maybe I you can get through with that one. Can you just create like a... I had, I, I had this project before, but I just didn't commit it. That's... That's really... Mm. Just a second, just a second. Yeah, that it's kind of more complex than just updating a field. That's what I'm trying to do. But everything complex will take a lot of time, so that's the problem. But well, so before I just want to talk about something. So until now, you can see we have this component. It's really big one. For example, this component is kind of doing some logic. There's a lot of logic here, like updating and stuff, and also rendering. 
But if you can see the render of the function, the function is not rendering anything. It's kind of, I don't know, like giving the responsibility of rendering or of showing like meaningful UI to other components. Is it true? You can see here, I'm not almost rendering anything. I'm rendering two components and these two components are responsible for rendering like meaningful UI. That's the case. So this component is more logic than rendering. Mm -hmm. Or it's more logic than displaying. You don't see here like inputs and div and stuff. But if you see for example the this component, the to do form. Please focus with me. Please. If you see this component here, it's more displaying and rendering than logic. It's just receiving props. Clear? Mm -hmm. So this component is the opposite of this component, kind of. This is more logic, no UI, render these two components and they will render the UI. This component, no logic, but I will render the UI. So you can see like two opposite kind of patterns. This is a really famous and well-known pattern called presentational uh, or container presentational components. So we have like components that contains logic. We call them containers, and we have you have components that display. So they present the UI presentation like component. Okay, it's really important to not mix these two patterns. Let's say the to do item is the bad example. In the to do item, we have rendering. And you have logic at the same time. That's really bad. <coughs> and this is why you can refactor it out into a <coughs> sort of render could be like a stateless component and then you have <coughs> like the manager components Precisely. on top of it to pass all the uh, <coughs> But they can like both react at the same time. Thank you. So yeah, as he said, yeah, it's kind of necessity to refactor these components. For example, this one, you could keep the logic here and in the render create a new functional component and inside that functional component you use it here, so you remove all this, you use it here and you pass it props. You take off all the displaying logic and you render for example here like to do to do item we have to do item here to do item let's say list. no list it's not really uh, yeah we can name to do item here and give it all the props to do item and stuff that we need inside and you can name this to do item container mm -hmm. so that's like kind of naming convention but it's not really like famous but to do item container now it's containing the logic and it will just render the UI here and we'll give it a bunch of props. And this component will be just responsible for props. Really readable. And also, if you want to change the looking of your website, the look of your website, you don't need to change the logic. That's really important. Let's say Facebook, they change the UI every time. But the functionality is the same. They are shot, post, the same thing. But they change the UI. Let's imagine if you are like mixing them both. When you want to change the UI, it will be a disaster. Or the opposite. If you have the same UI, but you want to change how you do that, the logic, it's better if you have them separated, so you don't need to kind of think about them like both like same time. This is the same in uh other programming languages where you have conditions about the Precisely. Three parts, so you can switch and move and change one part without affecting others. Exactly, precisely, precisely. So, I think sometimes you would also like the effect of something too complex. Then, right now, we're doing a lot of set state and a lot of the updating of the state, but there are also libraries that kind of gives you help to. Manage your state. Yeah, manage your state because at some point I, it's 
it's cool and it keep it as simple and you can stay that's really cool, but at some point it comes to fix and then uh, somebody has solved that problem already and you have to kind of put your head into another box, but that will solve another problem for you. Definitely. And yeah. then one thing that really sucks about uh, JavaScript as well is that we have a lot of uh, references and this and exactly. like if it becomes complex, then mm -hmm. somebody somewhere in some component wrote didn't that key in, in a proper way and then I sit over here and I think what's going on yeah. and then that's because it's kind of the same data structure. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so you have the same object as he said and maybe you are using this because I told you I told them before about like lifting the state up. So you put the state here and this component and this component, they are using both the same state. If this component mess with the state, this component will also be affected because yeah. of that. So it's really important to kind of deal with that. And generally there is like a patterns called like immutable like kind of state. We are using that here. For example, we are not using it like really fully, but if you see to-do list, no, if you see to-do list manager, maybe. Yeah, the lead thing is a bit, but I think it's okay. Like that can be dangerous, but the good thing is that we uh, we create a new object with this with the structuring of the to-do list, and so we, we don't reference an old thing, we get a new thing. Exactly. And then that's, uh, yeah, yeah, that's really, for example, here, we are creating a new to-do items, and I'm deleting a key from it. So. If another component, if another like uh, component is accessing the same data, I'm not editing this data. Mm -hmm. I'm cloning it and editing my clone. Mm -hmm. That's really important. But even here, I'm doing delete. It's still something kind of bad because maybe in this function I will use this, mm -hmm. and other part of this function will be affected by that. Just we can imagine a lot of scenarios. But yeah, like this, like we call this like immutable like patterns. So having immutable data. What do I mean by immutables? Every time you change the data, you get a new value instead of editing the old data. So you get like a bunch of new. Uh, that's really important, especially in the React world. It's really something big, super big. There's libraries like I use this library in my world. It's immutable JS. It's by Facebook. It's a really cool library. Just give you maps and stuff like that. It's a little bit like complex, kind of. It's not really complex, just the API is a little bit like that. Yeah. Exactly. So you have this map. Map is an object with A and B and C properties. You just like wrap it inside map. You cannot change, you cannot say that map 1.a equals something. You cannot do that. Because it will change the map. You say map.set the value of b to 50 and it will not change the map it will give you another map mm -hmm. so map 1 will stay and change it will give you another map too mm -hmm. you got the idea? Yeah. just like every time you edit or change something you get like a new kind of version instead of editing the old versions that's really important mm -hmm. especially if you did for example something in multiple places Every time you change it, you get a new value, so you don't mess with the old value. So you can track what's happening and stuff. But let's say if you have an object, and you keep like changing the value inside the object, you will lose all like the... It's not just about the old values, but if you want to debug what's happening inside the object, you cannot. Because when you change, the all the properties are inside the same object. Mm -hmm. So there's no kind of time traveling stuff. Mm -hmm. no question? Yes. Uh, just that the, uh, the Yeah. It says that you can import the library to What? Yes. It says you can import by npm install? Yeah. Or you can uh, write the script, say? Yeah, you can use it. Yeah. Which one is better? Well, it's up to you, but generally no one is using this approach anymore. Okay. No, no, one's, no one is developing website using I guess, no. No one. Except like some stuff when you want to try or you have really simple like websites. Yeah. Let's say you have really simple website with contact form or something. Yeah. And usually you would see only, I mean, you wouldn't have to do the open script thing, but you would have the script source, then that would be your React line. So you'd have to write that line one point. Yeah, exactly. In the future you would just so. so technically we have this now, but while using this, after that, uh, WebUp will build and stuff, and it will result in this thing. So we will have this in our, yeah, in our HTML, we'll 
but this is like the bill. Why? Because browsers are still like using this thing, but they are updating and stuff. Yeah, but okay. this is also annoying with like uh, the more things you install, the bigger your budget that's going to be. Like when, uh, because now we install Mutable and we install React, yeah. and then we have to take that and we have to serve it to people. And then the more libraries we use, and React is a very big library, the bigger, the more megabytes the thing's going to be in the end. And if you have like a uh, big app that's six megabytes or something like that, it's going to take a long time for it to load. So it's also a constant thing saying, in this project, do I need a mutable data structure? Is that important? No, it's not big enough. So yeah. I won't use it. For yeah, exactly. Time. But this project is big enough for it. And it makes sense to use mutable. And then you can start to do like code splitting and do a bunch of stuff. Kind yeah, of there is a lot of like optimization, yeah. as they said. Yeah. But That's it's kind of like a crazy. Uh, yeah, there's like a ratio you, can, you want to keep. You cannot all, all the libraries that you want. Your bundle will become much bigger and bigger. Yeah. But at the same time, you would like to have new Exactly. You don't want your life to be one big bug where you're fixing things. Where you yeah. don't know exactly. anything, so. Precisely. So there is kind of, I don't know, trade offs yeah. to consider. Big bundle size, less dev gain. Just so we will take a break. <laughs>